Traditional owners of the Ajamutna lands are hosting academics from Flinders University in a groundbreaking collaboration. Nanga, Yananga Pula, Inawatan Yerta, Napula Yerta. Roger Johnson is an Ajamutna elder and one of the community leaders here today. Yamati Kang. He said that this place here was connected to the Yomati, which is the Diprotodon. This is the only place so far in Australia that we've found megafauna remains from the same time as people were using the shelter. Well, just imagine 50,000 years ago, sitting on this rock ledge here, there's a beautiful spring running down the creek here, and you're a you're to knock on knock on it. The old people are watching the country and the Yamati Yananda. So watching him come up the creek and have a drink and maybe browsing, seeing this big animal grazing and drinking. And then you might see the giant kangaroo up down because he's in our stories too. And then maybe them large flightless birds, like large mallyfowl type birds that used to live here. It would be amazing, actually, to see that and to think that our ancestors were sitting here, living in this country, 49,000 years, practising ceremony, using ochre and using the same language as us, that me and Roger and the rest of the family are using, and Adjumat and the people are using today. It's pretty special. Christian's father brought an archaeologist to the cave in 2011 where a juvenile diprotodon bone was discovered. Yep, yeah. it's um, this part of it right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Warachi is a shelter on the side of a cliff, so it's pretty unlikely that this big four legged animal could have lumbered up by itself. The remains of this animal had to be brought up by something else, probably people. Because of this, the sheer presence of the bone in the shelter was once considered evidence of human predation. Yep. And there's no tooling marks found. Nothing that we can see. Yeah. But the Arjamutna people see things differently. Yenakanae, come up here, you mob. You're going to sit here and have a yarn? For thousands of years, Aboriginal people have used yarning circles to interweave dialogues with others, to build respect and share knowledge. The ancient stories of Diprotodon, or Yomati, paint a very different picture to what's previously been assumed. Yomati was mentioned all through the Flinders Ranges. It was huge. It, it, was, it was like a big bear. They reckon it was a dangerous animal. The old people said, as soon as the sun goes down, the kids used to go to bed because they had the feeling the Yamati was around to, uh, to alcon them, you know, to eat them. It's really interesting because there's no stories of us passed on of us hunting them and eating them constantly because we feared them. Yeah. Like a common wombat today, you know, they can be quite vicious as well. So you think about something that's 10, 20 times bigger, yeah. he's something to fear and you want to run from him. So you think about an animal the size of an SUV, how are we going to process mm. that? How are we going to cook it? How are we going to keep it? We didn't smoke methods. We lived subsistence lifestyle. We, we were hunters and gatherers. The bone that they found up at Warachi was from a a baby mm. Yamati? Does that change anything? Does that kind of fit well, in? Well, that might. That might have been opportunistic. You know, oh, this is something we can process. We've got a big mob here. Mm. One off. But there was no real stories of us hunting megafauna. No. no. Nothing passed on. And if it did happen, it would be on a very rare occasion. But really, we feared him. We can look at the skeletons of these animals and it doesn't tell us exactly how they behaved at all. So to hear about how the diprotodon 
how the Yamati behaved. It switches our thinking before maybe we were thinking about it like a big elephant, a gentle giant moving throughout the landscape. But actually what we needed to picture it as was a fearsome rhino. That is a, a new interpretation that we can start to test with the material that we have based on the traditional knowledge. So what can this knowledge add to extinction theory? It's a really complex issue. I think there was definitely some kind of human role in the extinction of the megafauna. I don't know what that is yet. But if you can imagine going back 50,000 years and someone watching an animal behave and writing it down, if you could find those writings, if you could find that record today, it would be a miracle for science. And what we have in knowledge of traditional owners is that miracle and it would, be, it would be a crime for science as well as for humanity not to listen to those people. This is Ngapuliyata, our country, but at the end of the day, this is our story together, you know, all of us. You can cut there, I want to compose myself a bit. At the end of the day, to mix the past with scientific knowledge as well is quite amazing. And later on we might find something even better. But at the moment, I suppose we watch this space, eh? See what else comes from it. Yeah. Megafauna disappearance in Australia is one of the greatest cold cases in world history. But there's one painting that holds the most intrigue between the Ice Age giants and the first people. 